The year is 334 BC and Alexander the Great has begun his campaign against the Persian Empire and he is facing his first opposition here at the Granicus River as he now faces off against the local satraps and their armies as they try to stop this Macedonian invasion force. What's up guys and um, welcome back. We're here with another DEI historical battle for you today and today we do have the battle of, of the Granicus River. It's a bit of an unusual one because it is kind of like a river crossing battle with cavalry fighting against each other as we're going to see here from the start. We've got cab going on in and they are clashing straight away. So we've got some uh, light push cab here fighting against the Macedonian Hippias by the looks of it and they're going to be uh, yeah, battling it out for supremacy. And uh, yes, this certainly should be a fun one. Yeah, so you may know about the Battle of the Granicus River. It is a, uh, it is one of like the, the major sort of like battles that Alexander fights. You probably count this one, Issus, uh, Gorgamela, and then maybe Hydaspes is like the biggest battles he fights. Uh, I mean, the uh, Macedonians at this one are about uh, 18,000 in strength. This is like the sort of like the size of the army brings across the sort, somewhere between like 18 and 30,000. I feel like it's like what he brings across uh, in the first sort of wave. And there are about 14 to 40,000 uh, Persians, sorry, at this battle as well, defending. Uh, most of them are cavalry um, and a large obviously percentage of the Macedonian army is also made up of cavalry as well. Um, with the Thessalians and Companions being some of the most famous ones. Uh, but there are also about 3, 000, uh, 4, 000, 5, 000, uh Greeks at this battle. We didn't actually really have them. We could have probably had a Rhodian army, but we uh, have uh, a 2v2 with large armies here. So we were like, well, we can't really merge the two uh, sort of... We can't have like a half a Rhodes and half a, a, um, a, a Persia army. That's not feasible in Rome too. The mechanics unfortunately don't allow that. And uh, the Persians don't have any Greek hoplite uh, mercenary units, which I'm surprised they don't, because the Persians quite often employ Greeks uh, to fight their battles and their wars for them. Uh, you see, like the the uh, ten thousand doing that for. Yeah, as you can see here, we've got uh, some heavy cataphracts in here as well. So this cataphract fight is kind of getting getting pretty extreme. In history, it was a much large cr uh, crossing point, probably, uh, well, I don't know how large, but a much wider one, obviously, for the Macedonians to be able to use. And uh, they also employed pikes into it to give yes, them the edge. Uh, and once they were across, I think the um, the Persians actually did retreat. Uh, they actually did sort of sit on a hill like this, did the uh, Persians, uh, with the rest of their army, like the Greeks and various others. And they sort of just stood and watched as the cavalry fought in the river for a bit, and then they were overwhelmed by Macedonians. And then after that, they kind of just retreated. That's kind of how the battle goes, if I remember correctly. It's very easy to tell who is who. The Macedonians looking very Hellenistic and the Persians are not. Uh, and so, yeah, it should be easy to tell in this melee who is who. But yes, if you enjoy DEI on the channel and would like to see some more historical battles, just generally some more DEI battles, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and comment show your support, guys. It was just to help out the channel as we work towards, I don't know, 11k, I guess is what we're working towards now. A slow march towards that, but yeah. If you do want to see more, you know what to do. Looks like, yeah, the, look at the Persians just here, massive, so much cab. We've got lots of Persian hippies here waiting to go in. Watching on as their comrades right into battle. Is our, I think we've got a lot of, like, Javi cab here. you got the uh, Persian uh, Hippo Stay, which I presume, yeah, it's just a jabbing cap basically. You see them there, just jabbing away, throwing the javelins over the top, trying to hit those uh, Macedonians in there. We've actually got some uh, Cretan archers as well being brought forward here as well, so they're actually trying to get a few volleys off, trying to help trying to rout these these Persians if they can. But I can assure you that this battle gets quite intense quite soon. It does actually move away from the, uh, the river battle, though the battle was decided very much in the river crossing in history. Uh, we decided that we didn't fancy having a, a DEI river crossing battle because we would be here for 16 million years, especially with some of these units like the uh, Cholka Speedays and we've got the uh, Hypertists as well, so they come forward as well. So there's a lot of units that are still yet to be committed. Uh, you know, going to a choke point, they will be tough to get rid of. We've got uh, some Macedonian hot plates here as well. We've got lots of uh, 
a lot of units. We actually haven't got too many pikes, uh, probably not as many as uh, were there, there were historically, but yeah, there's a lot of chulker speed days to go, and it's about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six units, which, and they are pretty hard to kill. Uh, and since the Persians didn't have any, we, for balance, it kind of like made sure that, uh, that there were other things that they could go for, basically. And there you go, the Persians actually did fall back, but they are sending in, it looks like fresh Persian hippies, actually. It's not like they give up on this fight just yet. There's also, um, yeah, the Pro, uh, Prodromoi, which is actually, uh, historically was also in this uh, in this fight as well, the uh, Light Cav. It's what they basically are, Light Missile Cav. But yeah, the Prodromoi, Prodo, Prodo I think that's how you say it. They uh, were in the fight, and they, they were kind of made up of uh, various different, like, sort of like Thracian and um, Macedonian. Uh, troops they were. We actually do have a lot of sort of like Thracian and uh, various other, like Agrianians as well which are uh, not like Macedonians really they are like from uh, the hills north of Macedonians here we have Agrianians here they're, they're very very uh, famous and very trusted troops of uh, of Alexander. He often took them on some of his toughest campaigns. We've got the Thracians here as well some of them uh, which he did bring plenty of those as well. We do have uh, a fair few Macedonians as well uh, in this front line it should be interesting to see how this one goes down, that is for sure. I'm excited. But yeah, we've got a mix of lights and, and heavies, you know. Not everything that, uh, Matt, that Alexander brought was, uh, you know, heavy infantry. He did have a lot of light support troops as well, uh, like the Thracians and the Agriani. Cat fight's still going on. I'm surprised. I didn't think it went on this long. Evidently, it did. Neither side's giving ground. I think the... Um, Macedonians might need to get some pikes in it. Really turn this fight in favor of themselves. And uh, actually looks like they are falling back now. Yeah, look at that. The cav is fully falling back now. They are finally giving up on this. There's a lot of cav going to uh, this Persian right. So we need to keep an eye on that. If the uh, Macedonians can get across, certainly make for an interesting fight. I'm excited to see how that one goes down. Looks like they're leaving one Hippias here just to slow down the enemy. Trying to, you know, Kill as many of these guys off here. We've got Macedonian Hippias in here. We've got the uh, Thessalians as well. But yeah, in the in the actual battle, Alexander actually really dies in this very first in his very first battle um, in the Persian campaign. Not his very first battle ever. But uh, yeah, he he nearly dies in this one. He um, loses his lance, and he has an enemy coming towards him uh, and about to kill him. And then I believe one of his like companions, like I can't remember the name of it. But one of his companions basically like saves his life and like. Uh, I think, like, chops the arm off of the person that was about to kill him. Um, so, yeah, he was very lucky in that sense. And then I think, um, yeah, I can't remember who it was. I think it was one of his companions, one of his generals, uh, supposedly. So, uh, which, but Alexander nearly died in that very first battle. It could have, like, how history would have been changed if he died in this, in, in this river, basically. He would have had no Macedonian Empire. Uh, you would have heard Persia may have like lasted a few more centuries. Maybe the Romans would have fought the Achaemenid Achaemen uh, Empire instead of like the uh, Sasanian one that they fought. Who knows? Persian hot oh, is in the about to die. We've got this little, um, little like cav unit here, the Basilikoi. About to go in. Looks like he's going to go after some of the uh, very light infantry here. There is. Um, I think these are called the Apple Bearers. They are behind the Melo Feroy, the Apple Bearers. But they are moving forward. And the, yeah, they are really tough to kill. And it looks like the Cavs going to get a tiny little bit of the archer. They didn't carry on into the uh, spears there. And yeah, this uh, little Macedonian bridgehead is uh, not going to hold for long. This is a good spear. This is a really good spear. Really, really good. Tough to kill. Here we go, the uh, Macedonians are now coming across in force. Looks like we're going to see Celians and also, yeah, like, sort of just all the light cab get across first. And it looks like the heavies are coming up for when they can. And also, we have Chalk Speed Ace as well shift forward. And yeah, here we go. Looks like we've got light, uh, light hop lights going in. First into the line. I don't think these guys can form a hop light wall, but yeah, they're also going up against some of the apple bearers. And they are going to be tough to kill. Very tough to kill. As you come on. What is going in here? I think it's more apple bearers going in. They're fighting off against, well, there's Macedonian Hippias, there's light 
uh, like like a hot plate to get in here for the Macedonians. Don't expect them to get massive kills. The Cavs are stuck in here. This needs to get out of here. The Sicilian Hippias is just stuck in there. He's wavering. Needs to get that out of dodge and get it over here. Looks like the uh, Cav force is being formed up over here. This um, here at Ill here, this 200-man Cav unit, it's a massive Cav unit, is pretty much Alexander. That is pretty much represents Alexander and his uh, his companions, his, bo his royal bodyguard. We have got a whole selection of elite Cav here. Actually, we've got a lot of like Thessalians, which are pretty solid. You know, they're a medium shot Cav. They're pretty solid. Uh, we also got yeah the Basilicoi, uh, quite a few of those. I think there are also like. Uh, some like sacred squadron, squadron as well, somewhere which are like also elite bodyguard cab, I believe. But I can't see them at the moment. But I'm sure they're in here somewhere. But yeah, the fighting is starting to go underway. Persia here. Not really allowing the Macedonians to get across, as they shouldn't. It's a tactical advantage to just like try and keep bottleneck the, uh, the Macedonians, have them like have a few troops come across, don't allow them all to come across. Because then they can't use their full army, and you can use a lot more, you can outnumber them. They are trying to cross. They're fighting on man. It seems like, uh, yeah, they're not going to win that fight, I don't think. They're taking a fair few losses. So are the Apple Bearers, though, I guess. They're just a much larger unit. Here goes Macedonian Hippias again. I think it's trying. I don't know. I think it's trying to go in for side charge here into the Hippias, trying to stop these guys. And that's definitely going to be a cab unit lost. I think it's, yeah, trying to side charge these light spears and having no real joy there. And also the Agrianians are also coming up as well. There are a lot of light infantry here though for uh, the Persians as well. These Gund and Nizagan here, these guys are just very light spears, just chaff. You can see here, it looks like it's like Persia's just going to sit on this hill, uh, ever since like, at the bottom of this hill, and just wait for the Macedonians to form up. A lot of Persians to try and get through, though. Here come the Chalk Speed Days. They are trying to form up. They are going to be the ones that are going to make the breakthrough. If anyone's going to make it, it's going to be them. Because Persia has nothing to match them. They are pikes. Sarissa are like, what are they, like 18 foot Sarissa or something like that? They're like pretty long. There's nothing that the Persians can do against them. Quickly now. You can see Rodians and stuff, they're firing to the flanks. I think they're trying to take out these uh, these archers as well, which is not a bad idea, try and focus them down. Also, you could try and just support the fights here against like the, uh, the apple bearers. You've got like a Macedonian light infantry here. Losing in these fights. I think it's more like lighter hot plates here. They're dying. And looks like Chalker Speedies are going in. Now we are seeing some routing Persians, some of these yeah, light spears that we got. I showed you earlier. They're getting killed off. And yeah, again, looks like they're trying to rush the Chalker Speedies before they can uh, set up. Not a bad idea, I guess. A big cavalry force now forming over here for the Macedonians. You can see Persia is. Uh, it's waiting as well. Definitely a smaller force, but they still got those scary-looking cataphracts. We'll just have a quick look at those. Uh, not really of this era. I've, this is a little like, historical, but just to give like Persia a little bit more of a bite, I guess, is to add these guys in. Because I don't feel like cataphracts are not like a thing by the time of Alexander. You have like pretty heavy cav, but not cataphract level. We'll see how they do. It looks like yeah, there's like lots of. Um, Lots of just, just like medium to light infantry really just over here. Got the, uh, it's like a general here. Ka uh, Karkadan Arch. I think it's a general, but I, because we had like two armies merged together, we had like also generals, and I feel like that might be one of them. I think he's like a bow spear unit, I think. I might be wrong there. We've got a Thessalian going in for a side charge there. Could have maybe like done with the chocolate speed is a moment or two earlier. So they could have then maybe got a better, a better side and then maybe a rear charge as well. Because, uh, yeah, their infantry is a long, long way off. These are actually phalanx infantry, apparently. Maybe they'll be able to deal with, I guess, the hot plights. I guess these can kind of count as the Greeks. These phalanx boys here. They are obviously Persian drip. You could imagine them as like, the, uh, the Greeks that are serving with the Persians. 
there you go, we've got the Yamal, this light is just getting routed here. There's still a lot of it to come in, as you can see. I think they are throwing javelins as well when they get the chance. Still more Macedonians trying to get across, trying to form up. I think some of them are in melee, but they are getting very much stuck in there. We've got the Hypatists as well. They still got to get across these famous boys. And there we go, Cav charge going in there. The Thessalian charge there into the medium swords did not come off. I thought maybe it would. In fact, did not. Yeah, if you want to get involved in any of these sort of like Discord uh, battles that we do on my server, we often do a lot of like scenario battles there and uh, and streams. If you want to ever get involved, feel free to join my server. The link is down below in the description. You're more than welcome to get involved. So this is the other oh, that here, the Sacred Squad from the Hera Hill. This is yeah, a small version of what Alexander basically has. But here we go. I think it's Cav going in. Yeah, here we go. Cav fight taking place. The Macedonian cap is ever so slightly better in most areas. The Sarissa is going to get absolutely munched there. That is a very, very light cap. Just there for speed, not for, uh, not for anything else. But yeah, the Macedonians fighting it out. I know there's been like a show about Alexander who recently uh, like arrived on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet, but uh, if you have, you have to let me know if this is... Uh, going similarly. I mean, I don't think it is, because uh, they didn't fight on the far side of the bank. They just fought in the river. That's why it's called the Battle of the Granite River. But yeah, still a very fun one. No one wants to see. If it, you could have a massive river choke point, that would be great, and that would be perfect for this. But fortunately, it's not a thing. Uh, we've got the Persian Hippies here. It's falling back. This is risky, because obviously, you get chased by the enemy, and then you just get routed anyway. Um, but yeah, this is certainly going well at the moment for the uh, Macedonians. You can see Alexander here is stuck in. He's actually ha helped route that uh, cataphract. That's pretty much gone. You see that the uh, other cab here is just getting routed. And uh, yeah, I think if uh, the Macedonians, just they should really just continue this chase. They have accidentally pulled through this unit here. I think because they had attack orders to attack the other ones. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the cab is obviously inferior to the uh, Macedonians. They just need more infantry up here. That's the problem. We have a overextended over here and the infantry is yet to arrive. Which is really full back and allow these hypertists to kind of become the uh, the left flank and then we can push out once again. Or the Macedonians maybe push over here because there's a lot of lights here. Really push hard here and then just try and defend on the left a little bit. But yeah, the Persians being very aggressive and it's kind of working for them. They're overwhelming the Macedonians in a few areas. They'll find weak points. Now Alexander always loving to be in the thick of the fight. And he's got himself some decent kills. How many kills has he actually got? 82. Not bad. Not bad. There you go. Yeah, the lights and the uh, and the medium cavalry there helping to get rid of some of these. Is uh, this ca Persian cavalry. Make sure it never returns. Most of the cab that's left actually is just like skirmishes on this side over here. Not stuff that can really get stuck in. The uh, cataphract has re rally but it's 62 men left. It's not going to be able to put up much of a fight. The infantry is just, oh, there's a lot of it. Um, he's going to have to be fought on a, on a short front as this fight. We've got another master in Hippias. I don't know where that is. There's 34 of them left. Oh, they just charge head on in. Yeah, it wasn't a smart idea. That's Sure. There's another, also a Pacific point in there. They should not have charged in there. They should have waited for the high position. The idea is that we're trying to slow them down. They so were retreating because we are trying to stop as many of these Persian units getting back to home territory, home turf. And now would be the time to swing in onto this flank here. If we could engage, uh, engage these guys and then swing on in and then split them. Like you can see, there's a big gap down the middle of this. Uh, of the battlefield here. And they're actually going to commit forward of these apple bearers. So that is only, if anything, opening the gap up a bit more. Really, the cab should now, yeah, go for hammer and anvils and try and rear charge these guys. There is still a lot of Persian cab on this flank, though. So, I mean, got to be careful. It won't be easy to pull off. Well, yeah, but a lot of Persian hippies is waiting patiently. The Macedonian balance power is not really with the Macedonian. Numbers are just vastly not in their favor. But experience and quality certainly is. Hades, Chalk speed is setting up. And if they keep throwing themselves into these guys, they'll get themselves impaled. I mean, they've lost barely any troops. This one's lost with six men. It's got, it has only got 28 kills, but I'm sure they've been killing. Or they're helping kill plenty for their teammates. 
to their comrades at arm. side shot into the side of these apple bears. I think it's the best way we're going to kill them. And they again, Chonky Speedays are victorious. In front of them is so many dead Persians. Glorious stuff, really is. So we've got um, Agrianians here as well, sort of, getting, sort of getting stuck in. They need to actually kind of do another attack order, I think, going to the side here. And Phalanx aren't really engaged. They need to push forward just ever so slightly. Good opportunity here for side shots again. I mean, if they wanted to get side shots into these light infantry, just a rip through them. Yeah, it seems like it's turning into a bit of a deadlock there. Archer fire is causing these uh, these spears to lose. It's good stuff. That's how they're going to have to win this. They're down to 10 out of 50% morale. And that's how you kill stuff in a DI. I'm sure many of you know that. It's not about killing the whole unit. It's just about getting uh, through their morale. You can see here the Persians starting to get stuck in against uh, the uh, Macedonian Hoplites. We've also got Peltas joining the fight here and uh, some light infantry. Fighting against more light infantry. Well, very light, actually. So... Uh, it's still going to be, you know, tough fight here for the uh, for the Macedonians. They're getting stuck in the cheap stuff fighting each other. It's only fair. Let the expensive stuff kill each other. Let the cheap stuff fight each other and have a bit of joy. Maybe get some kills. As that's going on, we're seeing more and more Macedonians now shifting over to this left flank. They are slowly getting here, the Macedonian. Hoplites, things are going to be able to hold the wall. Hoplites are pretty strong as well in um, in DI. They, they actually, you know, put them in a Hoplite wall, they will just kill a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Uh, the Cav here looks like it might be coming forward for another go. Uh, the Macedonian Cav is starting to, we're not waver, you know, it's starting to suffer casualties. See here the Sarissa, they're getting ready for another charge. I mean, we have plenty of units to go around that we can, you know, take each Persian unit one at a time. There is uh, also spears that are, that are coming forward. We really need infantry over here ourselves, shifting these Thracians, and maybe also uh, the Peltas. They need to get shifted over here to help try and win this fight, just make it a little bit easier. We don't want to take too many casualties in the cavalry corps if we don't have to. And in again, or once again, the cab goes dealing with the Persians. Cav going in here, we got the Thessalian Hippias going in against Sparabara. It's not a good fight for them at all. You do not want to get stuck into there. There you go, the, uh, the uh, Cataphracts, they're getting it encircled and we're going to see a, a charge as well in a moment from these uh, Thessalians. They're going to charge into the side of those uh, light skirmishes. That should be them pretty much finished, I would have thought. We've also got Alexander in the front lines once again. He's uh, trying to get stuck in. Looks like he's helping to rout some of these units here with a, a bit of a war cry. And you were seeing a few of these uh, Basilicoi uh, cav units re-rally, but we are seeing Agrianian starting to break, which is not good. They're starting to get focused down, I think, and just shot at quite a lot. Yeah, the apple bearers are dying, fighting in here against pikes. They are not winning this fight at all. But we are also seeing like other oh, Agriani and Peltas started to waver. I mean, they've, they've barely taken any losses. These guys are wavering. The front lines here are made of hypertists. They're also not having an issue. We've got some here eel here in the front lines. They need to get out of here. Get the cab out. I think my micro, my cab is atrocious in this game. I was commanding this uh, sacred squad. Not one of my finest games. Orders understood. You see 
there you go. Light imagery starting to break. Cav's still stuck in here. Finally, he's pulling out against these Sparabara. He's starting to lose. You see uh, Alexander here flanking around. He's like, well, I'm not staying in these fights. You're going to flank around. And you can throw in, obviously, more Sparabara here, force them back or, or something like that. This general is obviously as well coming close to the front line. And it looks like Alexander was maybe just going to go in for the final hammer blow here. This is not going to be needed. It's a Persian uh, like have their breaks. And now it's looking very good for the Masterians on this flank here, on this left flank. They all they need to do is just engage these units here. They've got light infantry to do so. If they just engage them, then manage to maybe defeat a couple of them or just side charge. Got a chance. They are breaking more of these light infantry here, as you can see. Uh, the center is not looking so great that we are seeing uh, the Cav here and also some Korean archers break. I think both, uh, I think the archers were, might be out of ammo, but that Cav should not have stayed in there. So such a big loss for that sacred squadron. But yeah, the ma uh, also the uh, Agriana and Peltas moving way ahead of the top speed ace. Wait for the Pikes, boys. They're going to be what can help win the game. They're going to help to win this game if they win it. It's looking pretty good for the. Uh, the mass series at this time. Balance power's not really changed, because I'd say it's a steady stream of rounding on both sides. Not been a, like a mass route yet from either army. And it looks like it looks like uh, Alexander here is leaving the left and he's going to flank on around. If he can do that well, he's got a good chance of victory. I mean, looks, I mean the Persians are sending a lot of cat, a lot of infantry in here. The Cavs actually still in here as well. This Basilicoid needs to get out of here. Let the Macedonians do their bit. Yeah, they've got like lots of Thracians up here. And, like, I think these are silver uh, or white shields, I think they're called. Whether they can get. Archer is off focusing on this general. He's going to go in for a charge here into the light infantry. This is going to be a good charge for the Persians. One of their first against the infantry today. Good charge in them. Getting it mixed in amongst them. Yeah, it's causing them to lose. And that might be a Macedonian light infantry gone. Are there are also Peltas here. I mean, if they can get a shot off on the uh, general, that's a big win. But yeah, a fair few Macedonians now starting to wave there. You can see that Alexander's got in behind. All he has to do is to take out these cav units here, which is going to be difficult. If he can get a good charge off on these guys, he's had no problem with the Persian Hippias so far. Uh, there are some more Persian cav units here, but if you can get those Persian Hippias, deal with them. They are fairly healthy. And uh, he, he's just got hammer and anvil opportunities everywhere over here. He's a general as well he could go for. This, uh, this Persian general is also looking a bit tasty, but he needs to be able to contain all his infantry. Really, you can see it's not quite containing at all. There's still some Sparabara and other various spear units here holding on. The Cav here is kind of waiting. The Sarissa, I think, is going to have to be committed to stop that general. It's not really a, a winnable, winnable fight at all. But the Sarissa will do it for their king. And in he goes, charging on in. Not a bad charge. I feel like they might have got the initial charge there. Uh, we're seeing that he's going to pop a rally. The uh, Cav's trying to get out of here now. Alexander, yeah, just chases him down. I think it's the spears on the way. Alexander might be a little bit overcommitted here. He needs to get out of here. He might need to lose his, uh, his Thessalians. But he might be able to get the, uh, the general out of here if he keeps going. Keep running for your life, boy. Flee, flee. I think he's a bit also exhausted. Yeah, well, he's, no, he's fresh, actually. He shouldn't be... I uh, have a problem there, but he's getting, I think he's getting slightly caught by like one or two Persians. I don't know, I think he's going to get charged here. Unfortunately, that's, yeah, he's trying to get out of there, but the Persian cab units got the running start and he's going to catch him, unfortunately. I think that might be Alexander in very deep trouble there. You can see a Sparrow Barrow turning it around and that's going to just try and deal with that uh, general, with Alexander there. That is not good. The other general is on the front lines. I don't know who, you could say this is, um, I don't know, like one of his, like it could be like a Heister or it could be, any of the uh, any of the Macedonian generals really that you wanted it to be could be uh, I'm trying to think of other ones right off the top of my head. Parmenion could be him. Actually, probably is more likely Parmenion or Nicanor. Nicanor was like in command of his uh, hypotists, uh, I, I believe. Uh, or it was 
Uh, Nick and Orr is either Commander of the Hypertus or the um, Companion Cab. I think it might have been the um, Hypertus. I think it was Herdicus who was in charge of the uh, Companion. They're fighting on hard here at the Masterings. Little do they know that left flank that their general is in very, very deep trouble. And I think he might have actually died. Yeah, Alexander has fallen, I think. And that is exactly what happened. Well, nearly happened in history. Alexander nearly died. And in this case, he has died. Uh, the general has been killed. There. You can see morale is not looking good here. Uh, they have actually managed to get a rear charge off. Have the, uh, um, have the Macedonians onto uh, some of these archers and managed to route them. They're going to get back through. Back, break back through. But... Uh, doesn't really matter. It does not matter. We've got a Masterian Hot Flight Tower here as well. They're not going to uh, go to hold for much longer. Hypertis getting outflanked actually here by a, a sword unit. They're getting surrounded. I don't think that's going to make, make much of a difference. These guys are absolutely legends. But they are getting rear charged. It's not helping a little bit. Fight on hard, boys. Fight on hard. There you go. They've been routed. It's unfortunate. I think that is just because of formation being breached and them being encircled. That's sad to see. And there has been a bit of a break as well in the center here. You can see a big gap has opened up. And the reserve Persian Hippias uh, has been uh, held on to. He's now seeing an opportunity. And they're side charging some Agriani and Peltas. Really nice charge there. They're going to make this breach a bit bigger, I imagine, with a should route this unit here yeah you can see the, the gap is opening up more and more more Persian Hippias has now shifted back from that other flank and it's going back into the center here and they've seen an opportunity now that they can't resist the other Persian general is still over here he's just shooting from range like a coward get stuck in boy come fight these Macedonian uh, Macedonian hot bikes They're going, they are like oh, a bit like a, a good central core here made up of uh, hypertists and also uh, I think it is just all hypertists actually. With this cab in circle and Nilsi looks like infantry now backing up is causing a lot of these uh, weak units to break. They've got the um, Royal Peltas here, they're, they're going, the Basilic Boy Peltas Day, they're breaking. So looks like we're going to see Cretans on a break as well. And yeah, the Persian Hippies just getting into the backs of just about everything now. It's just sad to see. I think uh, a, a bit of a problem for the Masterians has is that they've got multiple units stacked up next to each other. Like this Hypertist here. I mean, it's looking the other way now. It's not even fighting the troops in, in front of it. It is looking behind it. But yeah, they've got like Macedonian Hoplites and Hypertists next to each other. Uh, actually, they're not quite on top of each other. I think they are. Separate. Yeah, also there's like Peltas fighting down here as well. Yeah, the hype is more concerned about the calves than they are about anything else. Not a bad charge there, but it's not going to be doing great against that very heavy phalanx infantry unit there. And uh, yeah, in a moment we're going to just see a collapse to the left as Alexander's army breaks apart, and it looks like. Alexander is going to be defeated at the first hurdle in our DEI historical battle. Didn't go quite as historically planned. That's fine. That's the joy of these, uh, these battles. They look awesome. Man. The dueling out here. Some of the silver shields. Against Sparabara. Yes, come on. Sparabara are light spears. They're not going to be able to easily break through these uh, these hypertists by the looks of it. Yeah, just a couple more minutes left, and we're just waiting for the wrap up to take place. As we'll just uh, just fast forward a little bit as we wait uh, for the Masterians to break, because it's pretty much over at this point. We know who is going to win. This is going to be the uh, Persians. And yeah, it seems as though, I think it, obviously the big mistake was uh, was uh, the Alexander going way in behind. He should have waited, been a bit more patient, wait for more, more infantry to tie down the uh, the Persian infantry. Then maybe could have gone for some side charges, tried to break those, or maybe gone for the general. 
Um, but yeah, to try and go for the cavalry reserve is a bit bold uh, from on my part. I should have waited, uh, waited for more infantry reserves. And uh, maybe we should have maybe we were saying after the game, like maybe we should have just defended uh, a bit more on the left and then really pushed on the right because the right is just like light infantry and the hypertists and pikes and things like that would rip through them. While well, on this other side here, not much heavier. This is like mediums and stuff like that, but they, they hold a bit more. But there are quite a few of these apple bears as well still over here, the uh, Mellow Feroi. We're now having to fight the hypertists. Yeah, they're getting surrounded off, uh, surrounded now. Just uh, fast forward quickly as we just uh, wait to see what happens. But I hope you did enjoy, guys. It certainly was a fun one, and uh, it makes you know for a different seeing a bit of DEI on the channel rather than uh, I don't know vanilla Rome 2 or uh, some of the Attila stuff that we show off. Makes for a nice change. It looks like the hypertists are starting to break zero and head morale. Oh no, we rallied. I think they just got. Uh, oh no. They Pops Phalanx, they're on second wind, which is just key them. And also battle rhythm. Yes, yeah, and then there's just, yeah, it's just a couple of hypotes here and there. It looks like also uh, some returning archers. Uh, also, just, you know, the uh, at speed. returning here at the end, at the edge of the battle. And it looks like we're going to have one of the generals who's going to deal with them. Fair enough. Agriano and Peltas, they won't last long. And it looks like there you go. The, yeah, the hypotes have been broken. I don't know if any of the other ones over here are going to die. They're going to take a little while by the looks of it. They are, yeah, in their little cordon of defense here. They are actually routing a few of the uh, the Persians. So, fair play to them. They've managed to route one of those light spears. Imagine breaking at this point in the game. You know you're going to win. And you're like, ah, still, it's not worth it. And it's still going to break a few more of them by the looks of it. Yeah, look at that. I think they're going to get an apple bearer. Is that a spiral? Yeah, there's an apple bearer that's routing there. And another... Very light sword there, breaking. Maybe uh, Parmenion's going to win the fight here with his Hypertus, and that's all he's going to. Uh, that's all that's going to be left of Alexander's army, just the Hypertus and Parmenion. They'll continue the charge. But yeah, with the Alexander dead, that like so early on, that would cause all sorts of internal problems for Macedon. I imagine they go into like a big old civil war or something to decide who is going to be the uh, the next king. I don't know how if there are many Aegeids left, or whether it just be like what it kind of happens in history, and, like the generals fight for control of uh, of his empire, or just in this case, his kingdom. But yeah, certainly been a fun one with now seeing fire is being used. They are actually routing their own cav, I think, with the fire arrows. Yeah, it's, uh, I think that's actually not really succeeding in doing a lot. They're just uh, actually killing off their own hypertists, uh, killing off their own um, own troops here. The hypertists are not even fully in circle anymore. They're actually surrounded, been surrounded and killed off literally yes, every single light unit here. Incredible stuff. Uh, and that's the power that they have. They have some pretty good units here with Macedonians. If think if they fought on a narrower front, it might have been okay. The cavalry wouldn't have been very useful, but the infantry would have just ruled. Would have ruled. Uh, I'd also, at the same time, the Persians might have not allowed it. The Persians wanted us to fight on a larger that's front. Me. They uh, shaped up to set, uh, for us to kind of expand and come out of it. Really, we should have just stayed narrow and then just pushed hard over here in the little forest. Yeah, it was a fun one. I certainly uh, enjoyed playing this one. It's nice to come back to DI from time to time. Last one I think we did was um, Aqua Sexte, which uh, was a very much more quicker paced battle, not as uh, sloggy as this one, but still a fun one nonetheless. And uh, yeah, we'll just quickly uh, see these Hypertists die. They still just refuse to give in. The Cavs now got in. Uh, we've got more infantry. It looks like uh, more like things like the uh, Apple Bearers going in and some better swords. Yeah, these guys just refuse to die. Absolute legends. Orders understood. And there you go. It looks like some of them are starting to waver now. There you go. There you go. A mass route takes place. And that is the final stand of the Macedonians there. Parmenion gives in. And it's a close defeat for Macedon in this one. Uh, it certainly was a fun one. I had a good amount of fun playing this one. Um, yeah, we've got some massive kills on both sides here. Um, yeah, I was playing as uh, one of the uh, uh, Macedonian em uh, empires, one of the Macedonian armies. Um, I've been some of my 
Cav did okay, 237, but most of the Cav didn't do that great as it was fighting other Cav. My, uh, Alexander did get nearly 300 kills before he fell. Archers, 191 kills. My Peltas, 243 with this one here. Uh, Agrianin's both doing well, 232, 358. These guys are just machines every time they play. They seem to get massive kills. One of the Hoplites got 255 kills, and then my Thracian's getting 117, 111. And we have uh, Bulk playing as the other uh, Macedonian army. His general getting 361 kills and was still healthy. The other one, like here, getting 262 kills. He's got two others down here. Um, oh, no, he's got plenty of them. My gosh, he had so many hypertists. 456 uh, kills, uh, 244, 230. They did well. The Ch Chalk of Speed A's, like 90 yog kills. Yeah, they don't get massive kills, but they are just such a pain and really tough to kill uh, head on. Um, but yeah, if you get around them, uh, much easier to deal with. Uh, the Rhodian Singers getting 160, Cretans 100, 207, more uh, Javis here getting like 150, is uh, P Royal Peltas 233, and then Zagriani and Peltas uh, 178 kills, and his Cav also not doing great. His best was his Skirmish Cav, his getting 103 there. Then we have Cyrus playing as one of the Persian armies, his general getting 345 uh, kills, his Cav, the best actually was again a Skirmish one, 115. Uh, his uh, one of his medium swords here got a hundred three hundred and nine kills, and his apple bearers did pretty well, one hundred seventy six. Then his uh, sparabara down here getting one hundred thirty six kills as well. So yeah, not too bad with those. And then yeah, these uh, uh some other ones getting like yeah, one hundred eleven. And we have uh, D F uh, T H playing as um the other Persian army getting uh two hundred six seven kills with this uh spear bow hybrid. And then he's got his hippies did a lot better actually, 250 kills, 172. I feel like they might be used right at the end of the game to just mop up the Macedonians. Uh, Archers, 231 kills. Actually, most of his bows did very well, 157. Yeah, they got some good kills. Uh, his lights, obviously, nothing too insane. One got 127, 137. Then his apple bearers down here, 209, 229. 181, 169. But yeah, some solid kills there for everyone that took part in this one. Uh, thank you for everyone that did join. It was very, very fun. And I'll see you guys in the next DEI battle. Until then, bye for now.